Hi everyone. If I am audible, can you please put a thumbs up so I can, so I know that I am audible, sufficiently audible. Hey Stanley uncle, how are you? Hi Shreya, thank you, thanks. So you can hear me, that's good, that is good. Hi Emma. Awesome, awesome. So without too much of a delay, we'll start today's live. Um, so what I'm going to do today is uh, stickers, as the name suggests. And um, the, these stickers are interesting for me because um, I've always done these kind of uh, motifs, you know, um, florals and um, personalized, uh, you know, everyone's names written in different fonts. I've always done this and I've always stuck them wherever I wanted on cards, envelopes, whatever. And um, somehow, uh, somehow, someone with wet hands or someone who isn't careful manages to smudge um, the paint off these things. So I was wondering how I could work uh, something out. And uh, oh, hey, hey, Alka, hello. So, in my pursuit of um, um, ways to save my uh, my work, I came across this um, tutorial that taught how to make um, uh, stickers. And then I was like, okay, let me try it out, and it it worked out so well. I was uh, most impressed by the outcome. If you can see um, all these um, all these stickers I've made and stuck on my book, it's um, it's quite easy to do. And um, the end result is quite pretty, you know, I mean, um, so now I can actually use it with the kids um, on their books and nothing's going to happen to them. So I thought I'd share this with everyone. So to start off, I must um, tell you that um, today we'll paint a few things and after we paint, we're going to have to cut them out. And after we cut them out, we do the entire sticker making. It's a kind of... Um, you would you could call it lamination in some sense uh, because you are basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to put your um, cut out within two layers of um, of uh, cello tape okay transparent cello tape so um, for that you need to make sure that your cello tape is in the thin cello tape it needs to be about an inch and a half uh, this is about an inch and a half or maybe even two inches this would also work well especially if you want your um, stickers to be a little larger than you know um, a, a coin or something like that you, you might want to use the bigger tapes so I'm going with the one and a half for right now uh, but two is also just as good if you want something really large okay so what we do here is we um, first we need to create the first layer of, the first layer of sticker of uh, sorry cello tape has to be on a surface that will allow itself to disengage from the tape which is where you need to have a good butter paper now I used this some Audi eco bake parchment paper which which is around the house for baking um, but I have to warn you uh, when I tried it out the first time it worked beautifully uh, because this particular sheet had a layer of wax on it a wax or whatever that coating is that doesn't allow the uh, the cello tape to um, stick to it too too um, too strong. It, it does stick, but very mildly. It comes off easily, and that is exactly what you want out of a sticker, right? You need to be able to peel the back off. So in, remember that when you're picking your baking paper or your butter paper, your wax paper, it, you need to test it out before you actually uh, put your piece of work, your cutout, on it, and you know put your cello tape then your cutout then your cello tape because if you don't test it you may have some problems and I had some problems unfortunately I lost some really lovely artwork I had made um, because I used another type of baking paper and that paper so this is also baking paper okay this is also some sort of a parchment that we use for baking um, however this doesn't really have much of a coating because if it has it is it's very mild okay and uh, 
while I initially tested it with a piece of cello tape, I just like put it on, pull it off and it came off. It wasn't so bad. I didn't pay attention to how long the tape could stay. Um, I just I just thought it, it works and that's it. And what happened in the bargain is, <clears throat> what happened was I ended up with this. I don't know if you can see the damage, but there you go. You see this? The tape just uh, stuck to this and eventually just tore off and then it was a mess. And and whatever I had put on top here, just I just lost it and I was feeling really bad because it was already between two um, pieces of cello tape. So very, very important. Please test your paper before you actually start putting something um, that you have actually painted. Um, I would I would really uh, advise going for something that is actually thick the paper is thick and you can actually feel that waxy coating on it you know so I would advise that you uh, check your baking paper uh, maybe even try pieces of um, you know take, take a random cutout from a newspaper if you want put your um, cello tape on this then put that little clip and then put another piece of cello tape and cut it and see whether the back is peeling off completely and easily very important that it should peel easily if you notice see this is how easily it should come off right because if this doesn't happen then your sticker is really not a sticker right so that is like word of advice for everyone please be careful because i lost a lot of pretty things to bad baking paper or bad um, you know butter paper wax paper whatever it is so be one uh, Alright, so having said that, we will get to the actual painting. So today what I was thinking of doing is a couple of things because I want to show you how um, easily uh, you could try and do a lot of types of stickers. Now for example here I have only shown you florals. Uh, I can also show you some other themes like some other things. Suppose you are making stickers for kids, you want to personalize. Now names, names are a lovely thing to um, make stickers out of, right? So what you need for this is this essentially um, drawing paper. Now I don't know if you can see this. It's basically cartridge drawing paper. I don't think it's over 120 or 130 GSM. Not very thick. So uh, that's the kind of paper you need because the thicker your paper gets, the thicker your sticker gets, you know. And um, so it's just easier. And the other thing is you need to cut out all these shapes as as nicely as possible. With thick paper, cutting becomes quite uh, challenging. I would also recommend that you use a large scissor. I, I kind of use these ki this kind of a large scissor for uh, fine cutting where I want a lot of in between grooves and things like that. I use a large scissor, it's just less strain on the fingers. Um, so that's another thing you must have a scissor. Okay, so cartridge paper. Now uh, for what I have done is I have actually painted a whole lot of, this is what I do when I have some free time. When I say free time, like five minutes between uh, putting the water on the kitchen and waiting for on the kitchen stove and waiting for it to boil. Okay, so I can run back here and fill up three more, star, uh, three more flowers or leaves or do something like that and just leave it there. So this is a good thing to have, a little book um, that has cartridge paper and uh, you just fill it up randomly with uh, flowers of different types, leaves of different types or any motives that you like. I've, I've tried this, then I've tried a whole bunch of different um, florals. They may not turn out too well, all of them. Like you can see some of my roses are just, I don't know, ugly. <laughs> uh, but, um, but there's no harm, right? This is not uh, a fair copy. This is not a... Um, uh, a, a book you want to share as such with anyone so maintain something like this and this makes it easy why because when you want your cut out you can simply take what you want cut it out and get your um, your sticker ready without having to pull out your paints every time so here's an example of line drawing I actually want to cut this out and try it out I want to see how it looks okay so um, for this um, this live instead of doing it in the book I'm just going to use scraps of uh, a scraps of cartridge paper which I have left over from larger sheets that I had used so this is just convenient why because I can cut off what I want okay so let's take this book out I'm just going to show you a few um, a few motives um, I will also show you what you what you can do with the cutting just to make it one step easier I will share some of my so in addition to um, painting um, painting and keeping things ready I also keep 
cutouts ready so this makes it e a lot easier all you're going to do is pick up the cutout you want and and do do what you want do your magic so there you go so these are cutouts from earlier all right so i have these stored away in a little, little box and it's so easy to use when you want to use it all right so there you go all my little and this takes a little time so i would i would advise doing you know having some sort of a little box that has these things because it's so easy when you it's quick when you want to urgently make something so there you go i have a whole lot of these little things oh there's my personalized name amma's name that's my mom's name that's my daughter's name this is what i do when i am playing around with 5 minutes and 10 minutes and all the little minutes in the day that i get at to get to grab yeah i i mean there's a lot of this and um, so what happens with this kind of a cut out ready is that you can make what you want to make right away so if i want to make a combination of things i want to put together these flowers i want to put in a few leaves there you go my leaves are ready okay you can arrange them you can try different combinations of things right so having these cutouts already there is very handy because then you also get to pick and choose what colors you want if you have a particular um, color choice in mind you don't have to paint those colors and then wait for it to dry and then you can do this beforehand all right so this is what i wanted to show you some of these leaves are really pretty when i put them in at the right places they look really nice all right so that's what i did if you look at this um, sticker that i've made i'm not sure if it's shining too much but it's essentially these kind of cutouts which were ready i just placed them one below the other in the right order i wanted the small ones on top things like that and um, i placed them and then had this uh, sealed right and made into a sticker and now it's a set and it's and when i peel off the back it's not going to separate because it's all it's all together right so this is what you can do with all these cutouts that are ready for you already uh, in place okay all right let's get to some painting let's do some um let's make some more of these motifs not too many because we can't um, wait for too long there's cutting there's sticking there's a lot to do so i will use reuse uh, some of my already cut um, uh florals and things like that i will i will reuse them um, to make a few more stickers today okay so on to paints first off simple flowers now for example um here if all these flowers that i've shown you here as example are flowers that are loosely drawn loose it's a loose style of uh, painting um now if you are not into loose paint loose uh, florals you can make florals that are you know um what shall i say proper uh, have proper line marks and things like that so let me first show you one line um, ink um that's an ink floral or an inked floral which i then color with watercolor so so i'm going to have um this is the center of my flower at all times i keep in mind uh the the size of my cello tape because i i don't want to make something too big uh that won't fit in the cello tape Okay, I'm not going to go into too much of detail. Um, now I won't leave this flower as is. I will also put some leaves.
okay so that's one motif and um, once I'm done with this so in this case I've used a micron um, this is a, a fine liner um, and it's in it's water and fade proof so this is important because I'm going to paint on top of this if you use any other black pen just like that uh, that is not waterproof you won't be able to paint after you have drawn so I'm going to paint only because this is waterproof uh, as always my go to color is I think pink so I'm going with a watery consistency So don't worry about, don't aim for like perfection of, of the kind that you have uneven, uh, absolutely even, you know, um, the thing, paint everywhere. Uh, try, try not to do that because if you did that, that would be quite like print and printed stickers we all get. We have umpteen printed stickers everywhere. So you really don't want to achieve a print like um, effect, right? Okay, while that pink, light pink dries and before I put in the dark pink of the thing, I'm going to go on to the other part, that's the leaf um, and I'm going to start from here, a little green from the inner part, try not to touch, if it bleeds, it bleeds, don't, don't worry too much about it. I'm going to wash off the brush and simply uh, with this kind of washed off brush, just a damp brush, I'm going to just pull all that color so that the base remains you can while it's wet you can put in a little bit of pigment at, at certain places just to give it a tinge of darkness you know yeah. okay now onto the other leaf Oops, too much water along the All right. Okay, we're going to leave this because uh, if I touch any of the borders now, it's going to be a problem. I'll leave it there to dry. I'll continue on to the next thing. Okay, now loose flowers. Loose flowers are simple. Uh, I'm going to go with blue. Uh, Let's try one of my favorites. Um, you'll find this often <laughs> done often. I like this particular one. Okay, it's a wet, um, it's a, a nice um, runny consistency of paint. And I love the shade of blue. It's really pretty. So I just there's no right way to draw this flower and which flower it is even alone knows but it's my watercolor flower what I do at the end of this is I usually put in a little bit of pigment right here just so that it will bleed on its own you know so the centers are a little dark but don't be fooled once this dries you'll barely see that okay so you'll have to go in with another layer of um, definitely another layer of darker paint to uh, make it more defined okay that's one let's try another color i'm gonna try yellow yeah yellow okay and with yellow let me try a different flower now i'm not a big fan of uh, you know a very light yellow because um, you don't get to see the nuances uh, however if you do paint with uh, darker shades like maybe um shades like uh, yellow ochre or slight orange later to give it the um, kind of shaded effect then it's fine yellow does stand out okay so here i'm going to go with something like this you know some kind of a mm, sunflowery look so don't put too many uh, too many uh, petals because you are going to go in a second time with um, darker shade so leave it at that that should be enough we'll go back in after it is slightly dry 
okay and we go on to a uh, rose shall we do a rose i don't like roses even though i do a lot of roses i don't like roses because they they're really hard to get nicely i don't know if you understand <laughs> when i say get nicely um it takes some uh, practice to get a nice rose and i still can't say i've got it i know i haven't got it no i do the best i can i don't stop okay so we just go around and round with a bunch of petals if possible we try to get lighter so you can add a little water to it and try and make sure that the outer petals are bigger and slightly lighter okay so there you go again what happens very often when i do a rose is that i get so carried away with the petals that i end up making a huge massive roses Now look at this i mean and then i forget that i actually need to fit it in in a in a cell in a cello tape width and you know so rose my roses look so huge disproportionately huge in comparison to the other flowers there you go i'm going to stop here like intentionally stop here and with roses i feel i always find myself um kind of correcting myself always you know so every layer i keep thinking oh okay it look better if i did this and then it look better if i did that and it just never looks better it looks like it is so the rose i would say i mean there are people who got it really well who get it really well and i am i am very envious of such people but it is not my specialty flower yet Okay, so we have three flowers. Let's get on to leaves. Okay, now uh, having uh, having told you that you need to cut leaves, remember that leaves can be a little tedious to cut, not to paint. Paint is easy. To cut these is a little tedious. So keep that in mind when you are making leaves. Try not to make your leaves too thin, so thin that cutting it is um, difficult. I mean, even if you didn't make it very thin, it is difficult to cut leaves. So just try and make your job a little easier uh also avoid using the same green for different types of leaves so if i'm going for leaf like um this one okay i'm going to keep it li a little bit wide uh now this is the green i've chosen like a sap green kind of a sap green yeah it's going quite, quite bright and nice okay so some part of this is is definitely going to go hidden under a, a flower and that doesn't matter that's fine that's that's the whole point of having okay so i'm going to make one of this i'm going to make uh, let me make two of this actually because in case um, these are lovely ones you know you 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 can never kind of get stuck with one <laughs> you could always have more in a in a bunch and initially i used to go I used to get very um, delicate with the stem, keep it thin, but then I realized it's it's going to go under something, right? And uh, when you're cutting it, that thin stem is a real, it's a real challenge. You know, so I don't make them very thin anymore, unless of course I'm doing it to leave. Am I? Um, I'm not sure if I lost connection there. I think I have it. Okay, two leaves done. I'm going to go into another leaf. Um and this time I'm going with something like um mm, this is not exactly um uh, it's not viridian virid, viridian green, but it is uh, it's another green, but it is like viridian green. So it's not a commonly liked color. And yet I for these these uh, sort of stickers I really don't mind. I don't mind the bright colors. They're not meant to be real, right? We're not. <laughs> we're not um, aiming to um, imitate a natural flower and make it look like it's a pressed flower or anything like that. So I'm fine with a little brightness and some cheer. So here's one more. Okay, one, two, three. Maybe one more. Okay. All right. There you go. so i've got one more leaf in here 
and um, I'm going to go with a yellow, maybe a, uh, a slight yellow ochre and green, just to give it that yellow tinge. Okay, yellow ochre and sap green, maybe. Uh, yeah, a little bit of yellow ochre and sap green to get my last leaf. I don't have place here, so I'm going to go on to another sheet. Let this dry. Okay, yeah, and here I'm going to do. Um, oh, hey, Karen. Thank you. I love these colors too. I love all these. Primaries are my favorite. Um, and green of course. Not a primary but my favorite. Um, let's try. Let's try. Let's try. What shall we try? Um, those. Okay. Smaller leaves. Okay. But this is. This is really painful to cut. I know it is painful. So. But I'm going to do it. Why? Because they just look so pretty. That's just. Even if you have just one of these lying around. They look so pretty. So these are small leaves, stubby leaves. Okay. Uh, I'm only going to two of these. Again, perfection uh, in the in the sense of perfect color, perfect uh, brush stroke, not required in this particular. I mean, for these loose florals because they're loose florals. All right. Do we have enough? Yep, we do. Now, uh, what I generally do after I do this much is I go in with the second round of color. Now, the second round of color is what makes it a little better simply because uh, right now it looks rather flat, right? Like as if you just ran one and, and that's what I did. I just ran one color. Now, when you add the second layer of color, the dark tones and the light and uh, not the light tones, but the darker tones of each of these shades, it somehow starts to pop. Okay, so now going to the, okay, before we go to the blue, let's go to that pink which we uh, left over there. Now I'm going to go with a darker, um, slightly darker shade in there. So just at these points. This is my perfect flower. Now with the perfect flower, I will also add in a few of these. Okay, these really make it look nice. It's the darker shade, but a little dilute, diluted, so that I get that. mostly towards the center it kind of makes the flower look like it's got those curves and light and dark shades things like that okay for the center I'm going to go with um, kind of a yellow where's my yellow yeah let me try this is not yellow what is this yeah this is yellow okay um, I'm not going to make it very bright just a light in fact, it's a little too wet. Yeah, lift off some color and it looks nice. Uh, just to give it a little depth, uh, you'll find me putting slightly brown tones at the edge. Where's my brown? Again, too much paint. Sorry. The light above me doesn't give me a good sense of... kind of reflecting the water okay so here I go in with a little deeper green just to give it that sense of yeah there you go should be fine okay that one's done now for this one darker blue just a wee bit darker okay when we shouldn't and always always water down even darker it can't be a pasty blue okay a pasty um, paint it has to be um, quite fluid there you go see the moment you put these no flower is off camera oh sorry sorry it's my flower off camera sorry apologies center now yeah yeah perfect thanks thanks Alka okay so that was my blue 
um, going in with a little bit of uh, I'm not going with yellow ochre I'm going with um, an orange a light orange this is Windsor orange they call it um, honestly it's just orange um, and but again little water down because I don't want it to be bright or stark You know, to be honest, uh, you need to know your brush when you're doing um, these kind of uh, florals because I've struggled with with the brush. Some brushes just give me obnoxious um, looking things. Now, with the with the with the rose, somehow I don't like. I said I touch it and it usually gets worse. So I'm 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 gonna touch the rose. I'm gonna leave that rose. It just gets worse. It, I have to get better at my rose. Okay, now with the greens, I'm going to add a little bit of, now this is what I like about the greens. I What I do is I do different things. So sometimes I just, I just do this, you know, like a, a slight double shade um, just to give it, take away that flat look. straight away it looks much nicer now for these kind of uh, the broad leaves um, again I go in with a darker green but again uh, this is a viridian uh, kind of a viridian green I to darken it I I do usually put a little brown um, something like burnt umber again now this is everything has to be uh, has to has to have water in it so now my point here helps a lot it helps me if I took the paint directly uh, from the pan or from the cakes, you would get a very dark green. Now, because of the water in it, and of course the fine point, So there, there's my leaf. Uh, where is the other leaf? There it is. While we wait for that. Uh, for this leaf, I, I don't do much actually. I'm, I'm going to leave this leaf as it is. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to do much with this. Uh, for this um, blue, I think I'll. It needs a center, of course. Um, so I'm going to go with something slightly so with blue i've noticed a nice color is um, black blue and black is a great combination but um i i also want a dark center for this so i may go with black here and when i say black not jet black um like a brown with black or a navy blue with black so maybe that navy i mean not navy uh, what is that color mm, oh my colors baffle me sometimes This is um, cerulean. Yeah, this would no, not cerulean. Windsor blue, okay. Windsor blue. So it looks black, but it's actually Windsor blue and black. It's going to be, become a little lighter after it dries. With the yellow flower, I'm going to just use brown for now, dark brown. Um, dots are nice in certain flowers you can even draw a longer stamen and that looks nice too okay stopping with the flowers um for now this is this is all we're doing with the flowers um while all of this dries i'm going to do other things i'm going to do uh, a name okay we're keeping all of this ready and uh, let's go with uh, with 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 the latest addition to our family is my nephew jude whose name is just four letters so I'm going to go write Jude should I write Jude? yeah freehand nothing uh, planned <laughs> I'm just I'm just going winging it J And 
always have extra drops of water. If I don't paint looking straight at the letters, my letters get wonky. Now go with uh, going with yellow. Primary is mostly, but for the last letter, which is green. Those of you who can't do this, I mean directly, don't worry. Um, you can do this with um, with sketch pens and just write it out. You know, don't don't have to paint it and make life difficult. Okay, there's Jude. Okay, so we have a name in place and what else shall we do? Uh, do we have time for... Yes, we could probably do... Um, mm, 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 mm. Any ideas? Okay, let's do a butterfly. Okay, that, that's fast enough. I'm, look, I'm trying to keep my eye on the clock. Um, for this butterfly, we're going to start with yellow. This is a simple butterfly, okay? This is not... Um, anatomically incorrect actually to be very honest purely an illustration so all biology teachers here and if any uh, are on the call are going to not like my butterfly they'd say this is a childish butterfly that dry what do we need to do now yeah we need to um, outline you so I'm gonna take this um, I'm gonna take this micron pen point one and do this really carefully okay am I in focus yes I am just outlining the alphabet now the reason I'm doing this is because I want this to be one piece as a sticker I do not want to separate uh, the alphabets okay. so once I put this outline and I'm going to be putting a shadow as well once that comes in they all kind of join okay that is done now what I do is I um, that's my, there you go. That's my brush I go back with a fine brush and I, I do this okay I give it a mark a slight outline kind of I'm um, not an outline a shadow kind of with the same color just to broaden it a bit now they kind of fuse into each other because of all this um, the outline the shadow all of that
My daughter noticed the other day that I only write names of girls. Did you know that? And she's right. I end up writing the names of girls in the family and not the boys. So today I was making an exception. I'm actually making an exception. So that's done. Now is our butterfly okay to paint? Alright. The butterfly I'm going to do its center. Nothing great. Just a body. And a little head. Not looking for perfection here. This is just um, just making it um, interesting. Okay. So I'm going to put little dashes. I like these dashes you know. They work very well. There you go. And perhaps a green. Can't complete anything without. Nice big green here. I'm going to leave it at that. Let's leave it that way. Because all of these are going to get cut. So. While this dries, I am going to cut these, bring out your scissor and cutting skills put to the test. Now there are many ways to cut. If you are uh, uncomfortable cutting very uh, close to the edge, you can cut with a slight white border. I am going to show you both because I I'm, I cut very often. so. I find it not too difficult to cut without a white border. Now these little leaves, I'm not worrying too much. I'm not worrying too much about the serrations. Okay, that little bit is fine, really fine. Nothing's gonna happen if you didn't pay attention to all the serrations. A few here and there, yeah, sure. But otherwise. I'm going to show you the ones with the slight border too because um, you can see how the border really doesn't make it ugly or anything like that. In fact, it looks quite nice even with the border. Both ways looks nice. Stickers look nice whichever way. So do what you are comfortable doing. Okay. That's one. Now the tedious ones. Let's start with the tedious ones. So I may not cut all of them, just you know in the interest of time, but I will show you how they can be cut. So you know I don't have a goblin sitting and cutting it up for me, I do this myself. Is everyone able to see everything correct, I mean alright? Is everything okay? Alright, one tedious one. Let's see how it goes. So it's it's nice if you can avoid gripping the other hand, you know, too tight. It helps you to rotate, move. So the other hand just basically guides the paper the way it needs to go, kind of that. That that's the best way to do it. There you go. So when I want these rounds, I just. But again, if you don't have a big scissor or something that you're comfortable cutting with, it's tedious. These are tedious things to do. You will notice a slight white border and that's fine. 
when you arrange it you really don't see much Everyone can see. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Okay. So that's how we cut the leaves. I have some very noisy kids in the background. Pardon me. The noise. They are ready, set, go mode. Almost all the time. Okay. Here's my rose and I like going wobbly with the scissor because the petals are nice and wobbly there you go in the end the rose and its and its uh, curvy uh, le uh, petals actually looks nice you know in you know as a sticker there you go it's a rose now this one this one is you have to yes yes you can do a cutter but you have to be very careful with the cutter okay so the thing with I mean I, I'm I'm better with my scissor my scissor hands are usually more steady than my cutter hands I have tried cutter but sometimes I'm so impatient and the edge of the cutter probably isn't sharp enough and I end up um, tearing you know the paper as I pull so that's the reason why I don't use a cutter but yes you are right you can actually use a cutter if you use the right um, cutting tools, you know, things are very easy. So I think it's my cutter at fault. I use one of those uh, paper cutters, which are generic use paper cutters. But if you use actual, you know, those uh, triangular shaped paper cutters. Oh, sorry. Please lower the camera. Sorry. Am I? Actually, I should lower my hand. Is this better? Is it visible? Can you see what I'm doing? It's like constantly my left hand constantly trying to just maneuver. It's like driving through the streets of Bombay. Maneuvering the potholes, the people. Don't have to worry about the perfection there because, again, your strokes are not exactly perfect, right? In a loose floral. Oops, 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 oops. Bit of a hurry there. Yeah, I bent that leaf, the petal a bit. Okay, no problem. So that's how those work. I just wanted to show you and um, our last flower so because time is short we have another 10 minutes or so I need to get to the actual sticker making If you're not in a hurry like I am right now, go ahead and just, you can be careful with the edges, the tips, the way you want it. Okay, uh, that was one sheet. Sheet two. Now, the name cutting, let me get the name because the name is, um, is a nice one to show as a sticker. Now, with the name, I am not going to cut on the, exactly at the, this thing. I'm going to leave a slight white border. Sorry, am I too high? This is visible to everyone. I hope it is. There. Can you see a slight white border? I'm going to leave that consistently everywhere. And there will be sections like for example the middle of the D where I can't reach uh, with my scissor. And uh, for the purpose of most uh, uh, stickers really you don't have to worry about it. You can just leave it as it is. Leave the white space there. If you do have a fine cutter and you are able to spend the time and cut out that bit even better. But if you can't it's fine. So I'm going to leave the descent of the D as it is, okay? I'm going to forward for now at least.
okay so like i said you can take this section out you can take this um, that's up to you actually let me try this uh, reach out in there and just do this yeah there i got a sliver out okay but for the u and for the d the inner portions i'm going to leave them as it is okay that's done one more a butterfly oops i started cutting it exact oof i didn't intend to i wanted to leave the white space but it's okay and in this massive hurry right now This is another approach you can take. You can just keep cutting from the outside for leaves. You know, just cut the outline this way, and then snip off the edge and the in between later. And just go in later and just snip it off. Sorry, I naturally lift up my paper to get closer to me. Not realizing it gets too close to the camera. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let that way to the side because I want to get to this. Okay. Now, for the fun part. There's our butter paper. Let's keep this aside. By the way, for those of you who are watching, this was not done in paint. This was done with sketch pen. So, same kind of an effect, okay? You can do it with a sketch pen. Now, there's your butter paper. I'm not going to make it very large because our cello tape isn't very large. Okay? Now, for the first one, um, okay, we're going to keep this one. Oh, before we do that, we need to put the cello tape. I forgot about that. So there's my cello tape. I like to work in not too too much of length. You know, I prefer making smaller pieces of everything. Um, so you may find that you can work with longer pieces of tape. I'm not very comfortable with longer pieces of tape. So if, every, if everyone can see what I'm doing, I'm sticking tape onto my butter paper. And whoops. Yeah. Everyone saw this? Now, this is the layer that's going to peel off easily. You notice? So, this is important. This butter paper is really good. And uh, it peels off easily and that is important. Now, um, for the flowers. Now, I'm going to do an, a little bit of an arrangement. I have my rose here. And this blue one here. And a yellow one. The yellow one is going to be a little bit of a squeeze. Okay, let's do this on a broader tape. When I have, I, I'll try the broader tape for this. Let's get to what else can we do? Yeah, we can do this. This one, and one more perhaps. Uh, this butterfly. Yep. Okay. So what you do next? You take another roll of tape, of tape, another bit of tape. Okay cut it to a roughly the same length and place it ever so carefully on top of the earlier layer 
now for these particular ones you will find it's not difficult okay it's not difficult because it's an entire piece okay press it down now this is the part where you kind of laminated now your your little artwork okay once this is done take your scissor again and get to work now when you're cutting this time leave a nice thick border now the reason I say nice thick border is because this is the part that's going to actually stick on the surface that you're going to put your sticker on so leave a sufficient border because all of this is transparent and it doesn't matter you're not going to see any white uh, any white uh, paper sticking out right so this is the way I'm cutting it you can choose to do it smaller of course if you want but I prefer a slightly bigger Oops. and that's fine there's no need for perfection here okay that's one sticker and let's take the other one this cutting is a whole lot easier because you don't have to worry about exact or even you don't have to worry much actually you're going nowhere near the painting the motif it's not a painting really <laughs> okay okay there's your sticker and let's put it on something my black book has another side oops do I have another side yep there's my journal and I'm going to stick the first sticker gently pry away only the only the butter paper okay that comes off put it down and press all the sides in there you go that's your sticker let's try the butterfly comes off easily stick it just run your finger around the entire border so it sticks nicely how about that um okay getting on to the name um and i'm also going to use a broad tape this time so that uh, we can make our bigger set okay. tapes are very very noisy ok there you go step 1 paste your first layer of tape this is a 2 inch tape ok paste it on the butter paper next step would be arranging your motifs now here in this case we have more space so I'm going to arrange them this way actually I want to put this here now this part is going to be a little tricky and uh, from what I have read and seen people do uh, they say that you can put glue dots under these and let them hold uh, in I mean so that it holds the flower in place while I'm putting the next step but um, I haven't done that with glue dots I don't have glue dots at the moment so I didn't bother doing it but um, you can give it a try and that's just to hold it in place now this one can go in a bit yeah. problem here is my paper is a little wonky so I'm going to keep my Does this arrangement look nice? I think it does. Oops, this one's this one's hiding. So I'm okay covering the rose with a, another flower, really, because it's a rose. It's huge. I find this really tricky. So another thing we can do, just a suggestion. I haven't tried again, is that you glue it up beforehand with with fevicol or something, you know, glue like that. Moves a lot. 
and it's very important to see whether the stems stick out funny afterwards yeah okay this is not bad yeah this is going to be tricky very tricky because because it's all going to move fingers crossed yeah i would i would definitely recommend the glue dots because this is look at this and if any of this moves when i put this tape down now again I like my borders nice and thick just to be clear uh, having a thin border doesn't make it less uh, of a sticker or less stick less it sticks just as well um, I just I'm just thinking like in the lo uh, later as time passes I don't want it to come off and that's probably that's why I want to make sure the border is thick. big ones ready and quickly very quickly the last one that's jude we're gonna get jude down on this I'm not wasting any yeah I'm not gonna waste any butter paper here I'm gonna try and use jude make jude fit in that space there let's hope First one, oof, tight squeeze. Tight squeeze. Let's see. Oops. Take this one out. There you go. There's another sticker. And let's put it on. And let's see how it looks. Press it down when you are fixing it. it takes away all the air bubbles in it. There you go. I'm not sure if the and let's put this big one. Oops. The butter paper comes off so easily this one. The other ones are so terrible. So be very very careful of the butter paper. Look at all the overlaps. So cool. I like this uh, particular one because the up and down makes it little three dimensional. It has a nice 
nice effect. There you go. Looking pretty. <laughs> Even if I say so. So, uh, we are a little over our hour. Um, and But I'm, I'm glad that I was able to do these, these many. You can give these off uh, if you want to give them uh, to someone or give it to someone who wants to use it later. You can give it as is and, and it works well just like a stick, normal sticker. So, um, so yeah, that's how you make stickers. So some ideas for those of you who are going to go back and try something. I was thinking maybe you should, um, names of course, you can, you can do this with names, right? You can make stickers. Uh, for people for uh, using their names you can also make little motives now here are some of the motives that I've been trying and in the next few probably soon enough I will um, look up ideas okay so here's <laughs> I thought of um, a sea theme you know you have a shark and a whale uh, I tried Jude once before as well of course um, a rocket ship you know a spaceship um, a rocket um, another butterfly these are going to look really pretty if you have um, you know just one place you just want to put one little thing and a butterfly comes there it's, it's quite nice uh, may look even nicer on white because uh, then the body gets seen visible is more visible I even tried dinosaurs so you can cut these out and um, make stickers out of these so that was sticker making uh, using all our watercolor work Keep it small, not too not too uh, big because remember your um, your tape isn't very big. Okay, you have a two inch tape or a one and a half inch tape, and so the width of the tape is got has got to accommodate whatever you are trying to do. The other thing I would recommend is the baking um, paper, the the butter paper test. Please check, uh, stick a bit of. Um, of your tape onto the butter paper before you put anything nicely press it pull it off see if it comes off and Un unless it comes off please don't put any artwork in between because you're just going to lose it and you you're going to feel miserable okay <laughs> i'm just telling you because i'm feeling miserable and i'm trying to figure out how i'm going to salvage that bit that i did uh the third thing is uh what was the third thing motives butter paper yeah cutting scissors please use large scissors uh, this you you decide upfront whether you want to have a slight border or whether you want to keep it absolutely close whichever way it looks nice but once you cut it close you can't uh, uh, you can't leave that white space for anything else so that is important for you to remember so try to make your shapes in such a way that it is okay to cut so for example um, with this butterfly if you notice I did not give it any antlers and things like that I mean not is it an, is it antler yeah not <laughs> not an antler um, it's um what is the butterfly is oh, why is the word skipping me someone help so your the those um, antennae cannot be cut right it's difficult to cut antennae or legs or fine things like that so when you are planning what sticker to make plan in such a way that you remember yep antennae correct <laughs> so plan in such a way that you are constantly thinking of what you need to cut so fine things too many um, uh, lines those kind of things are rather difficult so keep that in mind before you plan which motif you want to make into a sticker otherwise go ahead and just have fun okay that's it there's no <laughs> nothing to stop you you can try whatever you like so that's it everyone thank you very much for joining this live um, I hope this has been helpful uh, none of this is an original idea from me uh, so don't think uh, I came up with this idea no I did not <clears throat> but making stickers um, you know arranging them the way we want especially these flowers flower arrangements I love doing these on cards and on things like that so I just I just translated that to stickers that's it so that's, um, that's that's something I wanted you all to know I hope this has been helpful if you have any questions and if you have any um, anything to share please do tag me or uh, DM uh, and I'll be happy to I'll, have, I'll be happy to see your work thanks once again bye everyone <laughs>